Over the last five very different decades, one car from Volkswagen has remained a constant. It is the original hot hatchback, and incredibly, there are now eight different generations to choose from. So in all its glory, and maybe some of the bad bits as well, I give you the Golf GTI. The original Golf GTI was first unveiled in 1976, and then it went on sale in the UK in 1979. And it was a landmark event in the world of cars. Five decades and eight generations later, the GTI is still a definitive car, but there have been plenty of ups and downs along the way. Which is why we got all eight versions together recently to trace the history of the GTI. Starting here with a go in, well, what else? The original Mark I. <laughs> it really does feel like it's from a different, not a different era, just a different stratosphere, this car. It definitely feels like a kind of modern vintage car, the original Golf GTI, but look, for heaven's sake, 1976. I think 1978 was the first time I came across one of these. I was about eight or something at the time, and I was absolutely blown away by it. All the stuff that you kind of interact with, the steering, the brakes, the accelerator, the gear change with the golf ball knob on it. Everything has this lovely mechanical honesty to it. It just, it feels lovely, it really does. But it doesn't feel kind of baggy and old and rubbish. It still feels quite taut. It still goes when you put your foot down. I just love this car. I really do love this car. And I'm not just saying that because of this feature. I really want to own one of these. To see just how much progress has been made over the last 45 years, I drove the latest Mark VIII Club Sport 45 next. The difference between them was startling, to put it mildly. So you start moving in the Mark VIII and the suspension feels astonishingly refined after the Mark I. The steering feels totally electronic, totally false. It's, it's you know, completely accurate. You can guide it down the road and place it exactly on the road where you want to, but there is very little pleasure from doing so, I have to say, and the, and the contrast is stark going from one to the other. It really does feel like a computer game steering on this car. By comparison to the Mark I, it's, I mean, it's completely unfair to be doing that, but I'm sitting here thinking this feels like a computer game. But, you know, get used to it, drive it for a bit, do that kind of thing in it. It's a lovely car. It's a lovely, modern, fast, efficient, effective, refined road car. No question about that. But you do wonder whether it actually deserves to have a GTI badge on the tail or whether it's time that they came up with a different badge. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty alert. Damping is excellent. The ride is very good too on this car. And it looks really nice as well. And it feels really expensive inside. I don't know, is that, is that evolution? Is that the way everything is going nowadays or has, has the GTI just gone so far away from what the original idea was all about that maybe these things shouldn't be called GTIs anymore? I don't know. This is a lovely car, but it's nowhere near as definitive as the original or as quite a few of the cars that follow the original. And I don't think it's as good as the Mark VII. So then I went back in time again, but this time not to the excellent Mark II, 
which was made between 1984 and 1992, but instead to the Mark III of 1992 and the Mark IV that followed in 98. So the Mark III was the first real attempt to make the Golf GTI civilised as well as good to drive. And I think it had partial success, not total success. The steering's a bit sort of sludgy and wooden. A lot of vertical movement in the Mark III, and there always was. The dampers on this car are not shot. There always was a lot of ever so slightly unchecked, unwanted vertical movement. And it made the Mark III feel quite heavy, a little bit cumbersome. It's perfectly pleasant inside, and it's perfectly pleasant to drive but it doesn't feel like a proper GTI to me. So the moment you get in the Mark IV, you really can tell where Volkswagen spent the money and you are sitting inside it. This whole interior feels massively better in quality. Just to, you know, the, the bits that you touch, the design of the instruments, the seat quality, just feeling the gear lever, it just feels much more expensive inside. And the most key bit of all was this, the Jesus handle. <laughs> they spent hours talking about how expensive feeling and how beautifully damped that was on the launch of this car. And all that was really impressive and it was true. But at the same time, you kind of thought, well, I'm not sure they've spent the money on the bits underneath, the bits that make the Golf GTI enjoyable to drive. And I remember that distinctly at the time, and I, it's absolutely the same now. Everything about the way the car goes down the road is perfectly civilized and good and okay, but it ain't no GTI. It never was, and it still isn't. And it's always been a bit of a disappointment, the Mark IV, because of that. They spent the money on the interior, and having spent two decades, pretty much, building a reputation for making the Golf GTI one of, if not the best, cars of its type to drive, they then almost threw it all away and sort of went, well, it's all about how nice the interior is, not how good it is to drive. And I think they got it wrong. The Mark IV goes down as, for me personally, it goes down as a low in GTI history. Fortunately, VW saw the light, reacted to the criticism, and gave us the monumentally improved Mark V GTI in 2004. Indeed, during my day with all eight GTIs, the all-round excellence of the Mark V is probably what surprised me the most. Why? Because with the Mark V, back came the interior quality and more to the point, back came a great front wheel drive chassis, mated to a two litre turbo engine that at last had just the right character to its delivery. Everything about the Mark V addressed whatever they were thinking when they came up with the Mark IV. Because somebody somewhere quite clearly went, this is a Golf GTI that we're about to make here. It's the fifth version of it, the fourth version we went off-piste and made a car that probably didn't deserve the GTI badge. So let's make a car that really deserves the GTI badge. And this is it. It hurt Volkswagen, I think, the Mark IV. But this thing, it's just cracking, it really is. I mean, this is a young example. It's not done very many miles at all. It feels, to all intents and purposes, like a brand new car. It's, it's quick. The chassis is just sweet as a nut, it really is. Also, the Mark V was the first GTI with a dual clutch gearbox. And that alone puts it down in history as being one of the better GTIs. I think this and the Mark VII, I don't know. I'm driving so many of them now, I'm getting confused. But no matter how many I've driven, the Mark V it's sweet, it's really good. No compromises here. 
I really like the Mark V. I'm quite surprised by it. Do you know, I think I might actually be more surprised by this Mark V than by any of the others. It's the dark horse, I'd underrated it. But no, this thing's blinding. So having righted the ship, the Mark V was followed by the similarly good, but slightly less groundbreaking Mark VI between 2009 and 2013. This model saw the first ever GTI Cabriolet launched, and it was a strong seller throughout its time, even if it wasn't quite as significant as the Mark V. And then in 2013 came the Mark VII, seen here in performance pack guise, which means it has the differential you want and the blinding dynamic sparkle that you wouldn't necessarily expect from a Golf GTI unless you were familiar with the genius of those originals. So the Mark VII, now you're talking. The dual clutch was pioneered on the Mark V, but it didn't really start to hit its stride perfectly until this, the Mark VII. I just love everything about the way this car drives. And I think, given a choice of all eight versions, am I gonna say this? Yeah, I am. Nah, you'd have the Mark I. Of course you would, because you'd be mad not to. But in 2021, I think this is the version that I would have, even more so than the Mark VIII, because I just prefer the interior for a start. All these haptic controls that you get in the Mark VIII, not sure about those. But I think the chassis is better in the Mark VII than in the Mark VIII. I think the steering particularly is better. Feel from the rear axle, turning the lot. It just feels like a 10 out of 10 car, whereas the Mark VIII feels like a kind of eight and a half car. Quick as well in Mark VII. Great car, great car. So that's 45 years of the Golf GTI. And I guess what's most obvious about this amazing car is that it represents progress. Sometimes forwards, sometimes backwards. But over time, VW has learned from its mistakes and the Golf GTI has evolved and become a better car as a result. Five decades later, it is still a defining car. Whether it'll be around for another 45 years, well, that's another matter entirely. Anyway, cheers for watching, and remember to click on our logo and subscribe to see more of this kind of content in future.